Today is Sunday, December 17th, 2006, also known as the third night of Hanukkah. When I need some good kosher food, there's only three words I need to know. Feed me Bubby. Today we're going to make potato latkes in honor of Hanukkah. And I'm going to make it as easy as possible. And I'm going to give you measurements, but actually don't worry about the measurements. They'll taste good no matter how. Watch. Let's begin. And today I'll show you how to make the potato latkes. It's very simple and easy. And no matter how you do it, it's going to taste good. First, I cut up the potatoes in small cubes, about this size or smaller, because we're using it in the blender, you want it to blend in quickly. And then onions the same way, cut in small pieces, so that it'll blend, and the onion helps to keep the potatoes more white. Another little thing is to, if you're not gonna do it right off, put a little bit of water in the potatoes, and that'll hold it to stay white. And eggs, this is my eggs, a dash of uh, pepper and a half a teaspoon of salt, depending on to taste. And flour, oh, maybe about a quarter cup flour to five, six potatoes. Uh, you can use mozzarella too, whatever you have in the closet. But I figured everybody has flour on in their kitchen cabinet. And the most important ingredient is olive oil because uh, the first well, one little bit of olive oil lasted eight days. So this little bit of olive oil will help create for the eight days. All right, and now I'm going to start putting my potatoes in the blender. Oh, it'll probably take you about three times with the blender to get all the potatoes in at once. And you have to have liquid. Put a little onion in, and pepper, and your salt, and the egg. The egg will give it the liquid to start. I'm ready to start the blender. Put the cover on. It takes no time. And the potatoes are nice and fine. And then we'll be ready for the next batch. Oh, and if you see it gets a little bit dry, add just a drop of water to get it started. I finished all my batches and give my mixture a stir, and now I'm going to add the flour in it, which is going to act as a thickener and take up all the liquid. Just give it a good stir, mix it thoroughly, so that the flour is well blended. There we go. See how nice and white the potatoes are? That's because I happened to leave them in water. I, I couldn't do it right off, so I left it in the water. Right, just give it a couple of minutes now because the flour will thicken and it'll make a nice crispy um, potato latke. And I know it's fried, but still we don't have it every day and then I use a paper towel afterward. So the first thing I have to do is add the oil to my hot frying pan. Oh, and I like to use a big spoon for the latkes. A good sized tablespoon will give me for, uh, the size for individual latkes. And the oil has to cover, at least cover the bottom of a, a quarter of the pan. Okay, it really doesn't use all of it, but you can really use to make it good and crispy. Let it get good and hot. I preheated my frying pan, I've added my oil, and now I'm gonna start with my first latke. There's one. And they're a nice size. Two. And the, a large frying pan takes quite a few. It, it makes, I would say it makes over 25 latkes. And that would serve well depending how many you want to eat per serving. It shouldn't take no time. There we go there, and I'm gonna get my plates now with the towels so that the minute they come out, I can put them right on the uh, towels to absorb the extra oil. I got questions, questions, confessions, suggestions, the message, the lessons, direction, they sent the... Okay, Bobby, are you ready? 
Yes, what's the question? Okay, well first we're starting off with Bruce who asks that in one of the episodes you made fish chowder. I want to make the recipe for my wife and me, but it's so big. Can I cut it down to make a recipe for two, or should I freeze the leftovers? Well, Bruce, you, have, you can only make a half a recipe. Don't freeze it. It'll stay in the refrigerator for two or three days, and it should taste very good. And I think a half a recipe should be fine for you. You'll have for one meal and maybe a little extra. Let me know how you make out. Okay, we're moving on to our next one from Cedric, who asks, I come from Luxembourg, and some recipes include dumplings. Are matzo balls the same as knedel? Yes. Knedelach is the word in Jewish. Dumplings is the English word. And uh, matzo balls is the English word. They're all the same. Um, they're all actually the same. The only difference is, is when matzo balls is made with matzo. Dumplings are more or less made with flour. Or you could make it with uh, matzo uh, mill as well. So knedelach is dumplings, matzo balls, whatever you want to call it. They all taste good. If you want to ask Bubby, then go to feedme at halutsproductions.com and ask your question. Or you can go and call us. Wait, why don't you just try? Ask Bubby. I'm here to help. Anytime. Okay, we're now going to move on to the Yiddish word of the day. Finally. And I think I actually know know what the Yiddish word is. It's Hanukkah, right? Yeah, Hanukkah. Hanukkah gelt. Oh, it's gelt. Yes, and you know what gelt is? Gelt is money. Well, is it's the chocolate, chocolate money. That's chocolate, but the traditional old way was uh, coins. And what we used to do is we we never had presents for Hanukkah. This is, I think, more or less today's way. We used to go to our neighbors and our relatives and friends, and they would give us a quarter, a half a dollar, a dimes. And you'd be surprised, by the time Hanukkah finished, we had quite of a little bag full of money. And we used to make a little pouch with two strings a tie and pull them together. We'd knock on our neighbor's door, and we'd, they would give us some coins. And you know something? I think it was more traditional and more fun than going out and buying someone a present. Go back to the old way. It'll have more meaning. Hanukkah guilt. Have a good Hanukkah. Enjoy. And we'll see you next time. Well, actually, we, we've got more, oh, more, more latkes. We've got more latkes, actually, oh. to make. The latkes are, are, are in, in the, uh, the pan, if, if you will, and the oil is bubbling, so we actually got to go turn over the latkes. So we'll be right back. I'm Sunny from Viral. Check out our show every Friday at VO.com. We're proud to sponsor the Yiddish Word of the Day. Happy Hanukkah, Avram and Bubby. It's brown around the edges and I'm going to flip them over. See how, the, how nice and crispy they're going to be and brown? Perfect when they get done. Oh, look at these are beautiful. Just be careful, it's hot. The hot oil and the hot frying pan. Your oven should, the um, range should be on medium high to make them crisp up and get brown pretty fast. There, now look at these. They're, and they'll be done in no time. And when I'm, they're done, I'll place them on a paper towel to absorb the extra oil. Potato lackeys are ready, and now I'm going to let them drain on my paper towels. Oh, they're beautiful. Look how golden they are and crispy. And then I'm going to tell you all my little secrets in a minute. Just get them out of the frying pan. They're really hot, and the oil is hot. Be very careful. And turn my burner off. And then you continue making pack batches until you use them all up. But I'll show you my first batch. And you'll taste my lackeys. They'll be delicious. Every, now I put them on my serving plate. And I'll have to get my sour cream and applesauce and show you how I freeze them. You know, you make them when you have a chance to make them. You're not busy. That's when you have to off from work or at night sometime in the evening and freeze them. And you know, the funny part of it is when they're frozen and you put them in an oven of 400 degrees, on a layer, they taste even better and crispier than, than now. Oh, I have to get my sour cream and applesauce. That's the best way to eat potato latkes. One minute, I'll be right back. And that's gonna serve the 
shot, because and I know my grandchildren can eat a half a dozen at a time, and I can't keep up with them. So this is why I freeze them. But I'm gonna let you taste it. Well, maybe through the camera, imagine the good taste. There's three to start, and applesauce. Oh, you have to have the trimming to it. It's very important. It adds to the flavor. Ah, it's delicious. And sour cream. You can use yogurt too, uh, but I like sour cream. Maybe it's the more old-fashioned. How do you like this? Taste this. You'll like it. And have a good Hanukkah. Oh, and I have to tell you how I freeze them because that's just as important as eating them right away. By the way, if you want to have make a, you have to make them in a lot of latkes because if you have two or three people, they'll get cold. So what you do is you take it, you put it on a plate like this, and you put it in a warm oven. That's when it's fresh. And then you can serve everybody at one time. But in order to make them ahead of time, you know at night or sometime when you're off from work, this is the way you do a frozen. Make your last kiss, cool them off first. Make sure they're cool. And then take aluminum foil. And these are my frozen latkes that I froze the other day. I had time to make it. Because bless my grandchildren, they come in the house, they smell latkes. Oh, I can't keep up with them. And you know, when they were in school, we made latkes for lunch. And I had to make a hundred latkes. For, can you imagine for a hundred children, the mothers from the PTA got together? And Mamma Mia, how could we make so many latkes? So we devised this way, and it was delicious. And you know, the frozen latkes tasted even better than the fresh, because we put them in frozen on one layer in a 400, preheated 400 degree oven, oh, for about 10 minutes. You have to use your judgment, take them out. Oh, are they delicious. And you can serve everybody. And my children were the happiest. They were so proud because their mother was at school and they got the extra latkes, especially at the table where they sat. All the kids got more because mama was there. I always took care of them. And this is the way I did it. They have to be frozen in single layers in aluminum foil. See how these frozen ones look? Take right from the freezer, put them in the pan, layer one layer. and 400 degrees preheated, and in no time you'll have delicious latkes. Think of me, I made a hundred latkes, and when you walked in the house on three frying pans, and the, the house smelled of fried latkes, all right? But it was delicious, and you had the flavor of the Hanukkah was coming, and Hanukkah was here. As you soon today, enjoy, and let me know how successful you are. I'm sure you won't have any problems. And don't worry about the exact measurements. They'll taste good and crispy no matter what, how you make them. Enjoy. Because I love you so. is part of the Blueberry Network, where listeners and podcasters come together. Blueberry.com.